The last intermolecular force to be discussed is hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is an especially strong dipolar force. Here is an example molecule. Now, please don't look for R on the periodic table. That's not an element. R stands for rest of the molecule and is usually a carbon chain with hydrogens on it. The important part is the oxygen-hydrogen bond. Oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, so we know that oxygen will have a partial negative charge and hydrogen will have a partial positive charge. Imagine that there's a similar molecule in the vicinity. The hydrogen of one molecule, which is partially positive, will be attracted to the oxygen of the other molecule that is partially negative. This dotted line represents a hydrogen bond. Not only is the hydrogen of this molecule attracted to a different molecule, but the oxygen of this molecule is also attracted to another molecule. Again, the attraction of positive and negative partial charges. The only hydrogens capable of hydrogen bonding are those bonded to either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. Why those three particular elements? Well, hydrogen bonding results from large electronegativity differences. Fluorine is the most electronegative atom on the periodic table and will have large electronegativity differences with hydrogen. Oxygen's number two. Nitrogen and chlorine are tied for number three. So why isn't chlorine on this list? You may remember from Coulomb's law that the closer charges can get to one another, the greater the force between them. Chlorine is large, it's in the third period, whereas nitrogen is small. So hydrogen bonding results from large electronegativity differences and small sizes, which allow for close distances. Hydrogen bonding is particularly important in the water molecule. Here is a look at the crystal structure of ice, which is made up of many water molecules, as represented by the red sphere for oxygen and the two blue spheres for hydrogen. You notice that the crystal structure seems to have hexagons in it. And this picture to the right shows that hexagonal hydrogen bonding scheme, and that's why snowflakes are six-pointed. Hydrogen bonding is also responsible for ice floating on top of water because it's less dense given the many empty spaces. So just a check back to make sure students recognize the difference between intramolecular forces and intermolecular forces. A is an intermolecular force called a hydrogen bond in this case. B is an intramolecular force known as a covalent bond. It takes about 40 kilojoules per mole to break a hydrogen bond and 400 kilojoules per mole to break a covalent bond. So which bond is broken when water evaporates? Obviously the one with lower bond strength. When water evaporates, hydrogen bonding interactions are broken. So here's a question about which like molecules can hydrogen bond. Remember, for hydrogen bonding, we need a hydrogen bound to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, and atoms with lone pairs. So let's imagine water to water. We have a special hydrogen, and we have lone pairs. So we have both pieces. So water has hydrogen bonding to another water. What about methanol to methanol? We have a special hydrogen attached to oxygen, and we have a lone pair on another molecule. So methanol has hydrogen bonding to another methanol molecule. What about acetone to acetone? A lot of times students think that hydrogen bonding can occur because they see a hydrogen, and a lone pair. The lone pair part of it is fine, but this hydrogen is attached to carbon, so it is not a particularly polar hydrogen. Acetone cannot hydrogen bond 
to another acetone. Acetone is the material that's often found in nail polish remover. That means that it is very likely to boil because the molecules do not have a strong attraction to each other. Which different molecules can hydrogen bond? First, let's consider water and acetone. Water has a hydrogen bound to oxygen, and acetone has a lone pair. We have both pieces, so hydrogen bonding can occur. What about methanol to acetone? Methanol has a special hydrogen, and acetone has a lone pair on oxygen that's partially negatively charged. So once again, hydrogen bonding can occur. And how about methanol and water? Methanol has a special partially positive hydrogen, and water has the lone pair. So yes, methanol can hydrogen bond with water. All of these combinations work. They have the necessary two pieces. So here is your student question. I want to know if hydrogen bonding can occur between nitrogen Z, so that would be this one here, and I notice it has a lone pair on it, and hydrogen D. Would that be able to make a hydrogen bond? If you don't think so, then let's move on to the next possibility. How about oxygen X, which has a lone pair, and hydrogen E, which is attached to this nitrogen? Does that have the two pieces necessary for hydrogen bonding? Answer C is for students who never come to class or listen to videos. And finally, please also evaluate answer D. There is one proper answer here.